Hey everyone, this is Founders365 with me, Stephen Haggerty. Today I am joined by Mark Anthony, founder of Demolition News. How are you today, Mark? I'm pretty good, Stephen, all things considered. <laughs> good man, I'm glad. I'm glad you're safe, I'm glad you're healthy. So this is the main thing. So That's the starting point, yeah. As I, I, I just, I'm just back from the states, so um, yeah, I'm, I'm currently in self-imposed lockdown, um, <laughs> which, given that I work from home, doesn't really make any difference to me whatsoever, to be honest. I, I was about to say, because have you found you're more productive or less productive when you have to work from home? I'm Even exactly the same. Be, uh, no, I'm exactly the same because it's what I do day in, day out. So really? it's really made no difference to me. I, I guess the only difference is there's more members of the family around the house than the normal. But apart from that, no, it's not really made any difference. No, that's good. I'm glad to hear that, Mark. Listen, let's dive straight into this. I would love to know what is Demolition News, what you're about, how this this new site came about, and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, well, I'm I'm a career journalist. I've been running about demolition and construction and construction equipment for about thirty years now. Um, and, and one of the frustrations that I had as a as a journalist and and also working in PR was the fact that it, the news in the demolition sphere was all in very very small silos. So there are various trade associations, all of whom have their own websites, their own magazines, but they only write about their own members. Yeah. Um, there was no single source of supply and I was literally sat in a bar with a friend of mine in Istanbul in Turkey about mm, nigh on 13 years ago and he actually said you know wouldn't it be great if there was just one place where we could get all the demolition news in one place and I thought well I'll steal the name and I'll go and do it and I think that was on a Friday night by the Monday morning it was it was live um, the first week we had 80 followers, um, and I think most of those were probably my mum. But then <laughs> it just grew from there, and, and we've, we've gradually grown and grown and grown. I mean, on Demolition News, just the website alone is is about 60,000 people community. But then obviously we've we've more recently embraced social media and that kind of thing. We've, we've topped 100,000 on Instagram. So, yeah, we've, we've got literally a global audience now, which I certainly didn't envisage when we started. And it all started from a pub conversation. I love all that. good stories start at the pub, don't they? Exactly. What's that saying? It's like no good story starts with I was eating a salad. <laughs> <laughs> it certainly isn't with mine, no. <laughs> exactly. So over the course of 13 years of starting from that, that pub round the table you know, on the Saturday, kicking it off on the Monday, what are some of the changes and challenges that you got, you have gone through as a business and through the growth and and really making yourself known in that industry to be that like one stop, completely biased by the sounds of it, news source. Yeah, there's a, there's a couple of answers to that. I mean, I, I guess the first one was the fact that I I come from a, a print journalism background, so you know I've worked on various paper magazines over the years. So coming to terms with working purely online or initially purely online was quite a challenge because you know I, I'd never built a website before never had any desire to to be honest um but that took some getting used to i think more recently it's it's embracing um social media has been a key challenge but i've, mm. I've kind of cheated that system because i've got a, a 25 year old son who knows his way around instagram way better than i do so i i lean on him quite a bit uh, but i think the the big thing was was just growing the community i mean i i said to somebody about 10 years ago that my my whole aim was to own the media space within the demolition industry. Mm. And within probably two years of doing saying that, we'd actually done it. Um, and it, it is because we go we, we go across national borders, but we go across association borders and, and federation borders and that kind of thing. So it, I, I'm quite fortunate in that the demolition world is not particularly big. If you think about the UK alone, there's only 600 companies or less than 600 oh, companies wow. that I need to target. So it's not like I've really conquered the world. You know, I've, anyone can attract 600 followers. And then once you've attracted the, the, the UK, you get the Americans on board, which is another yeah. thousand and so on down the line. So it's, it's just been a progression, really. That's really interesting. And in terms of the, the viewership and the, community aspect sorry is probably a better way to say that have you found that it building that community has been quite a straightforward thing because i often think that you know if we think about the trade industry as a whole a lot of people in that industry are you know anti-facebook anti-social media anti-online presence um have you found any challenges with that side of the fence yeah, in actual fact, I think my experience has been almost the polar opposite of that. Oh. When, we, when we first started, probably 85% of our traffic came via uh, Google. Um, these days, it's probably 60% Instagram, about 
percent Facebook, a little bit from YouTube, a little bit from Twitter, and and Google is is now way down in sort of fifth or sixth position. So ours has been the difference of that, and I, I think one of the the reasons for that is. When we first started, we were targeting sort of managing directors and senior directors of, of mm -hmm. demo companies who they're more likely to be on LinkedIn than they are on Facebook. But once you've gone beyond those guys and you're down at you know digger driver level and that kind of thing, Facebook is is kind of where they congregate. Yeah. So, you know, I, I we've certainly seen that that take off particularly in the last couple of years. And as I say, Instagram has has really pushed our figures through the roof in the last probably eighteen months or so. Have you noticed any other people trying to become competitors of yours from seeing how well you guys are doing? No, in actual fact, I mean, we, to a degree, we came into a, a fairly mature market. There were already a couple of magazines. There's a, an American one, um, and there's one based in the UK, which claims to be international. Um, but again, you know, they, they tended to be very, very tied to trade federations and trade mm -hmm. associations. So they, they take a much more narrow view of the industry. And and also, I, I come from a news journalism background, and I, I tend to say it like it is. You know, the trade federations and associations don't particularly like admitting when, for example, an accident has occurred, particularly if it involves one of their members. Yeah. Well, I, I have no truck with that. You know, if, if there's been an accident, we need to talk about it because, you know, there, there is a potential learning opportunity there to hopefully avoid a, a, an accident in the future. So I, I guess mine has been a bit more warts and all than, than perhaps the existing um, and as I say, we, we, when I first started, you know, our target was, as I say, a UK-based magazine. They, they claimed a, a readership of, sort of 15,000 a month. I can do 15,000 in about 30 minutes on Instagram these days. So, yeah. you know, it's the, the race is over. We've won. You know, it really is as simple as that. <laughs> you, you, you're waving the winning flag, the checker flag. Absolutely. Brilliant, man. I love it. Uh, well, I'm curious, actually, if any of those associations have actually tried to get you under their wing because of the amount of, I guess the amount of influence that you've you've created, really. Yeah, funnily enough, I, I did have an experience uh, last year. One of the trade associations was running a an exhibition, and obviously they wanted the biggest possible uh, audience for that. So they asked to use our primarily our Instagram following um, to help advertise the exhibition, which I did. You know, and, and they they paid me for it and everything else. Um, but then I I. You know, obviously, all the time that was going on, I was still writing in the way that I I tend to write, yeah. um, and the the show was over by about half an hour, <laughs> and and we had a falling out. So uh, yeah, that was the end of that relationship. <laughs> I, you know, I, I mean, I understand their position. You know, they 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 have a job to do, and and yeah. you know, they they like to show the industry, you know, free of accidents, and you know, everyone gets along very very well. When we all know that's not the way business works, and it's certainly not the way that demolition works. No, exactly. It's. Uh... It definitely sounds like one of those things where, because you're almost whistleblowing the industry all the time, because you're this unbiased person. To a degree, yeah. I mean, I, I've I've earned a reputation, good or bad. I'm the guy that says I, I'm the guy that tends to say in public what people are saying in the industry oh. in private. So you know, I, I I get a lot of emails and a lot of text messages, you know, keeping me informed of, of what's going on. But I, I get an equal amount when I've actually stood up and, and been counted on something. You know, whether it be the reporting on an accident or you know decrying the industry for one thing or another. You know, I, I tend to get a lot of support. You get a bit of flack as well, but you know that goes with the job, really. Exactly. And um, why was it important for you to build this community and build this brand business in that viewpoint of being completely unbiased? Because it kind of sounds almost like there was no one doing that before. And I could see the benefit of you doing it. But why was it important for you to do it? because nobody else was um I, as i say I, I over the years i've i've built some pretty good links i've got a lot of friends and, and contacts within the industry um and and i'll be absolutely honest when i first started demolition news i i did it for me and the guy i was talking to in the pub um and you know i i, I had no great aspirations or, or expectations about it but gradually you know we, we started to get our own voice and, and started to say things that, that other people weren't necessarily saying uh, and the numbers grew so we did more of it and the numbers grew again um yeah. to the point where i mean I, i'm sure we'll come on to this there was a unfortunately there was a tragic accident in the demolition industry in the uk uh what four years ago in february um and when that happened 
you know, I, I got it was me that got the phone calls from Sky TV and from the BBC mm. and from the ITV because you know I, I had the profile and frankly I'd stand on TV and, and tell it like it really was rather than trying to put a, a nice sheen or a gloss over over what had just happened. You know. Yeah. Uh, th- and how do you feel? Like, do you like being that person? Do you like being the person that people come to? Sometimes that one was a hard one. Um, you yeah. know, with nobody likes to talk about accidents, particularly when four people have been killed. Um, and you know, ultimately, I mean, not just because I own a living from it, I get on very well with the guys in the demolition industry. Um, mm. and I don't like to hold them to account. You know, in an ideal world, I would never re- report on another accident or fatality ever again. But if they happen, you've, you've got to put your hand up and, and, and say, you know why it happened and everything else and um, one of the things that made that one peculiar was the fact that the accident occurred during the dismantling and demolition of a power station Mm -hmm. well those power stations are being demolished all over the world at the moment because obviously we we are moving away from fossil fuels so the findings from the investigation into that accident apply here but they apply in america in germany in australia Mm -hmm. south africa and so on down the line somebody has to stand up and be counted on that and it just turned out that it was me and now do you find that more and more people from different countries are reaching out to you because your reach is getting bigger and bigger and bigger? Oh, no question. Yeah. I mean, certainly when we first started, you know, I think our reach stretched about as far as London. <laughs> uh, and I, I'm in Epsom in Surrey, so it wasn't a huge reach. But, yeah. you know, when you look at it now, I mean, our biggest readership by a long way these days is in, is in the States. Um, I think second these days is probably Turkey bizarrely yeah. um we're big in brazil big in, you know i it, the, one of the bizarre things is the fact that this time last year i was in japan um and i i arrived in in japan you know and i you know i was introduced as a guy from demolition news well two of the japanese guys followed me on instagram they had no mm-hmm. indication whatsoever that i was a journalist you know as far as i was concerned i was just the guy that posted demolition photographs on instagram you know? so, <laughs> so yeah it, it is a global reach and I, I, even last like last week i was in i was in vegas and you can you can walk onto a, a show stand and, and people know who you are because you know my face is plastered all over this thing you know you're an influencer <laughs> Do you know that's a really it's a really strange one. I I know a lot of YouTubers and Instagrammers don't like to be described as that, and, and yeah. I, I'm not entirely sure I'm comfortable with it. But you know, when when it comes to things like when you're talking about accident prevention, and you know, I mean, one of the things we've been pursuing recently is um, mental health awareness. If yeah. I can influence that, then yeah, damn damn right, I'll take the term influencer all day long. Not a problem at all. Yeah, I mean it. Whatever word you want to use, it, it so sounds like you've built an incredibly positive community and platform that shares like the truth, which I love, right? Because I think whatever industry you're in or or whatever sectors you work in, if there's a source which you can get that unbiased information, it's only ever going to be a benefit. Um, and the fact that you've built this up, and what I'm really intrigued to know is how does it feel from going from that pub conversation to now being able to, like you said, reach 50,000 people within half an hour. That's that's an incredible achievement. Uh, it continually blows my mind. Uh, <laughs> I, I, you know, it's it's little things. And, and again, because I, I think because social media tends to be statistically driven, you know, you, mm. you do tend to watch how many followers you've got on, on various platforms and, and things like that. As well. Yeah, well, exactly. You know, and and it's little things like you know, as I say, we we passed the hundred thousand followers mark on on Instagram a while back on 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 the Demolition News channel. We, yeah. We'll be passing the two hundred thousand on our sister channel, Diggers and Dozers, fairly soon. But it's when you you put a post out that you're you know you, you're quite proud of it. It's, it's something you photographed or something you videoed, and you look back in sort of two three days, and it's reached a million people crazy you know I, I i as i say i come from a print journalism background and, and at the very height when i was working on a construction magazine we were producing forty four thousand magazines a week and you know we were very proud of that well forty four thousand. I, I i wouldn't <laughs> what's the expression i wouldn't even get out of bed for forty four thousand <laughs> pounds i possibly would but certainly not views or followers you know yeah. these days we're, we're talking in the, the hundreds of thousands and as i say on a fairly regular basis in the millions as well it just it blows my mind it really does you know the fact that all this exists in what is effectively a box room in my house you know it's it, it is remarkable and, and from your phone effectively yeah you very much so i mean you going back to when i was on on a construction magazine, you know, our editorial team was about 30 people. Well, I, I'm doing what they did on my own. 
you know, yeah. well, okay, I, I'm, I'm saying on my own, just I, I'm going to say it quietly because my son's next door and he'll come and hit me around the head in a minute. But, you know, <laughs> but, but by and large, it is on my own, you know, and, and, and to achieve a global reach of, you know, people that are genuinely interested and like minded, mm. just staggering, you know. And how do you think you've done that? And how do you think you've got to where you are now from building that? Is it just the fact that you've you've gone for that honest, unbiased approach, or is there a secret source that you think you've had? I think that's the starting point. But I, th- I think particularly latterly with with you know our embracing of social media, I think engagement is a is a large part of it. You know, you 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 do tend to find that you know, tr- particularly trade associations, trade federations, if you're in those in those organisations, they they talk to you freely. If you're not, you're the mortal enemy, and they won't. Whereas you know, I'll I'll take a, a phone call, or a Skype call, or a, an Instagram message, or whatever it might be from anyone. If they're interested in demolition, I'll I'll speak to them. You know, We're, and and that's why I mean we've we've been a consultant on a couple of TV shows now. And, you know, we you know we I, I helped out on a on a, a West End play at one point because they wanted some sort of demolition reference. You know nobody else would do that you know because yeah. it's it's not the sort of it's not really mainstream but you know i if you search demolition my name pops up fairly high up so <laughs> i tend to get the calls you know how, how did you adjust to that switch of from you know the print background to this now where you know literally like you just said you know you can have it in your hand and you can see that instant feedback where i'm guessing in the print world you could guesstimate your readers and and guesstimate a certain factor, but you could never get the exact numbers. How have you adjusted to the difference in that sort of journalism? I think from a from a publishing point of view, that's been probably the greatest benefit of what we've done, because you know we'd, we'd send out a print magazine as I say once a week, and you know we we might be lucky, and once every three months we'd get a letter to the editor. Whereas now, you know, I, I'll I'll put a post out, and you know, sometimes within seconds, I've got feedback on that. You know, whether it might it might just be a thumbs up or a like or whatever it might be. Yeah. It might be a phone call or text or whatever. And you know, particularly when you you stand up and be counted on on something that the industry considers important or worthwhile. You know, I, my, my phone just lights up, and and bizarrely, I, I mean, I I've never followed a magazine or a publication to quite. The degree that some of our followers do you know as i say I, I was in the states last week so we do a weekly newsletter and because i was in the states i didn't do it i've had emails you know where's my newsletter what, what's what's are you okay are you, are you you know are you housebound or no i'm just i'm away doing work you know um and that, that's been a real eye opener to me and, and to be honest I, it's it, it sounds a bit trite and a bit of a cliche but it's it's that kind of thing that has really driven the direction of the of mm-hmm. demolition news and, and latterly diggers and dozers as well. It's not what I want to say. It's it's what the industry wants somebody to say. Yeah. So you know, I, I tend to just feed off that. So you know, you're, if I, if I'm avenue, the phone, you're, at, you're the avenue it comes through. Yeah, yeah, that's all I am. I'm, I'm just a conduit. You know, yeah. if if the industry's got a an issue with mental health awareness or safety or fatalities or whatever it might be, you know, they tell me about it, and then I just have to put it, hopefully, in in words that make sense, and then spew it out again. You know, it's a, it's a weird job we have sometimes. Do you ever think? Do you ever step, step back and just go, "How have I got to this position right now?" <laughs> I, the, the, the time that I notice that really is when you're meeting strangers. You know, mm. I mean, first off, having a name like Mark Anthony tends to raise a few eyebrow, uh, eyebrows anyway. But you know, somebody says, "You know, what do you do for a living?" I'm a journalist. Oh, that's interesting. What do you write about? And demolition. <laughs> Nothing. You know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, that really refers that. back to Fred Dibner of sort yeah. of thirty years ago and, and and wrecking balls, which we haven't used in this country in anger in twenty years probably. <laughs> um, so you know, it, it's it's an absolute conversation killer to everybody outside the industry but but that's where we are have you found that any of your old colleagues are now trying to get advice from you because they want to kind of do what you do or live that sort of lifestyle where you can work from home and and build your own brand and build your own community but obviously in a different industry not so much i mean there are a few that have have kind of i I wouldn't say they followed me because they 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 largely did at the same time as me um but no i I, in actual fact i mean I, i think Certainly, in the sector that I'm in, the, the divide between traditional media and, and new media is just mm. getting wider and wider. There are a couple of magazines, particularly in the in the construction sector, that chose—I mean, literally chose—not to embrace social media, chose not to publish online. And 
you, you, I just look at them and think, well, what what are you doing? You know, yeah, I mean, I, I, I know I know you want to sell your magazine, but man alive, you know, get get with a get with a program and, and yeah. you know, join the twenty first century. You know, why do you why do you think some people are like that? Why do you think some people are completely anti, you know, online social media, any of that kind of stuff? I think there's a couple of answers to that. I mean, I, I despite the fact that I'm in my fifties, I think age is one of them. Um, I, I think there's a resistance because people have, you know, we've always done it this way and we don't want to do another way. Um, I, I have the benefit of, I guess, because I'm my own boss. If I choose to spend two days editing a video, I don't, I don't require being paid any more for that. Whereas yeah. if you're an editor or a, you know, a reporter on a magazine and somebody suddenly hands you a video camera and says, you're now a videographer as well. Well, hang on a minute. Are you going to pay me more? Are you going to train me on this? Mm -hmm. So there's, there's that reluctance as well. Um, but I, you know, I, I don't have that, you know, as, no. as far as I'm concerned, if there's another way to reach the audience, then that's exactly what I'll do. And, and that, that's what prompted, you know, we, we, we went from demolition news, which is a website, it then created a magazine, which is a print and electronic magazine. It created a YouTube channel. It created a podcast. And this, the whole thing just kept on rolling and rolling. And mm. um, where's it rolling to? What do you want to do with this? What's your next sort of steps or plan? Uh, well, you know, I'm, I've given up the, the thought that someone's going to come and knock on my door and buy the whole shebang. <laughs> and, and, and to be honest, I, because of because of who I am and what I am, I, I'm not entirely sure this is a business with an exit strategy anyway, mm. because if somebody bought it off me and then I left, yeah, okay, you've got the database, right. but that's all you have got really. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I, I, I wouldn't say I'm irreplaceable. That's certainly not the case, but to maintain the voice that the magazine and the website I've got would, would be very, very difficult. So no, mm. I, I, to be honest, I'm enjoying I'm enjoying things at the moment because it's given us a, an opportunity to do other things. Yeah. You know, as I say, I mean, it's, it's given me an opportunity to you know write books, write books for adults, write books for children. Um, you know, play around with podcasts, and we're we're three years into that journey as well now. And and even you know, I came back from from Vegas um, with an, a new idea of that. There's a lot of technological change within the demolition and construction equipment market. You know, the, the use of robotics and that kind of thing. Yeah which doesn't really fit with anything that we do at, at present. So I just sat here a couple of days ago and, and built a new website and, and that's where that will live. And, you know, it might work, it might not, but it's, it doesn't really matter either way. You know, I'm, I'm quite happy playing around with it. Yeah. It sounds like you've really found that balance of having the community that, that fulfills the life ambitions as well, you know, in terms of income and, and all that sort of business, business things that it needs to be doing but you still have that, what I love is that you still have that search for like, oh, what else could I be doing? What else should we be looking at? Uh, I mean, the obvious question here, Mark, is are you, are, are you guys on TikTok yet? Yeah, well, <laughs> well, and therein lies the story. Again, uh, my, my son being the age that he is decided that we should be on TikTok and I said, yeah, okay, you, you feel free. Um, and he's he's he runs the diggers and dozers um the, the sister publications um tiktok and he's already had you know millions of views on on various posts that he's done yeah. so i've i've kind of begrudgingly followed suit i've done no <laughs> dance moves i've done no lip syncing or anything like that but yeah we we have a tiktok presence and it is growing it's growing by the day um i i think one of the the, the the key things in in all that we've done is what we're really really good at is building an audience and, mm. and going where the audience is and i, I think probably more than it anywhere is the, the podcast has proved that because yeah. everything that we do you know if, if you were to read an article or read the magazine or watch one of our videos you've got to stop what you're doing whereas if you broadcast a podcast you can listen to it while you're walking the dog. You can listen to it in the car. And and that's been the feedback. I mean, we, we did a, an episode recently with a, a guy who drives a digger for a living. Um, and he contacted us purely because he had listened to our podcast while he was at work. Yeah. He said, you know, he got tired of listening to Radio 1 and Radio 2. What can I listen to? Oh, this guy's talking about demolition. I'll give that a listen. And he, he, he got in touch and said, you know, I, I, I love what you're doing. Fine. If you love it that much, you can be in the next episode. And that's exactly what we did, you know. Fantastic. Do you ever struggle to think of content and think about what to write next or post next? Not really. Because 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 most of the, what we do is is news driven. Mm. You know, it doesn't stand still. I mean, when you look at what's going on in the world at the moment, I mean, literally just before I came on on air with you, 
somebody has started a, a campaign to um, gather together personal protective equipment, which is obviously very commonly used in, in particularly in demolition, but also in, yeah. in construction as well. So there's a, there's a demolition company that wants to try and get access. If anyone's got any spare PPE, then then they've started a campaign. I've had the, the news on that. It's up online already. So no, the, the, the news cycle never, never stops. Features mm. are slightly different because, you know, you, you're always looking for, for something, particularly I think when you're, you're talking about, podcast content where yeah. you're not so much news driven you're, you're just looking at something to to generate interest and engagement that's that tends to be a bit harder but as i say you know it, with most of it being news driven you just follow the lead of, of what the industry is talking about exactly and, look, and i'm guessing with recent news or, you know with the virus and coronavirus and everything people are reaching out to you to find out what's going on in in the industry and how it's being affected very much so. Yeah, very much so. And it never ceases to amaze me, you know, when we've had, I mean, for example, I mean, I'm, I'm not that much of an anorak, but I do tend to check on, you know, things like stats on, on the Demolition News website mm -hmm. on Christmas Day. And it's it's in the thousands, you know. There right. there are people who now, you know, I know not everybody celebrates Christmas, but there are thousands of people around the world that decide on that on Christmas Day, I better find out what's going on in the industry, and that's exactly the same now, you know. And and yeah. funnily enough, I mean, we've 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 seen we've seen a spike over the last few days purely because you know the, probably the last half a dozen stories have been COVID related. Mm. That you know, I I'd rather it wasn't. I'd I'd much rather be yeah. out on site mixing with people and, and and shaking hands and and that kind of thing. But that's where we are. And and if that's where they want to find their news, then that's exactly. where we're we're going to put the news for sure. And that's what I was about to say. It's you know even though it's not good news, it's still great to know that your community is still coming to you to know the right news and the news that will help them. Very much so. Yeah, very much so. And, and again, you know, I, we, we tend to find that with, you know, with the, with the magazines, you know, they, they tend to get a bit of a spike in demand when, mm. when times are quiet and that kind of thing. So, you know, if people are locked at home, you, you, it's, it's very easy to say you can work from home and, and, and I'm fortunate in that I can do that and you can do that. Yeah. But if you drive a digger for a living, yeah. not so easy. So what um, are you going to do yeah. apart from twiddle your thumbs or shout at the children? Well, mm. maybe you want to consume a bit of content, be that yeah. video, audio or, or words. And, and we, we provide all of that. Yeah, and it gives it gives people that comfort, I think, in some aspect to know that they're not alone, you know, especially people that have a manual job. It isn't the fact, like you just said, it's not as easy for them to work from home. So when they do, are forced to, it's nice for them to know that they're not alone, that you've built this community. Uh, do, does you, Random question, but does your community interact with each other much? They do, yeah. I mean... They do more so on the sort of social media side of things. Mm. So you know, the, the, there's a, there's a lot of lively debate. Let's call it, um, <laughs> particularly on Facebook. And oh, yeah, I, you know, I, it is an industry that calls a spade a spade. You know, and and you know, swearing at each other is is almost a term of endearment a lot of the time. So you know, so, some of the, the the conversations that go on would make you blanch a little bit, but but they do. You know, and and I, I think that's one of the things that I like most about the demolition industry. It doesn't matter what part of the world you're in. Everybody speaks the same language. You know, they all have the same challenges. They all face the same risks and dangers and that kind of thing. So, you know, you, you can literally have a conversation between an American, Australian, a Dutchman, a German, and an Englishman, all talking about exactly the same thing and all sharing their experiences just because I've put up a bit of news on, on Facebook, which is, is marvellous, you know. It's, it's Like I said earlier, it's just a weird world to live in right now. You know, in all aspects, for whether from built, so I, I would even debate whether your business is classed as a news business anymore. It much sounds more like a, almost like a, a media agency type aspect, just from the amount of reach you have. Uh, yeah, I mean, we, we've certainly, I mean, particularly on the, the on the uh, Instagram side of things, we've certainly started to to monetize that in in that way. You know, we we do get approaches because, it, and it's not just purely demolition products and and that kind of thing. When you when you think that our audience is, I think the last time I looked was ninety eight percent male between yeah. twenty four and thirty five. Well, that's a pretty valuable demographic for somebody yeah. that's selling whatever it might be. You know. It, Nivea for men or whatever it might be yeah. so you know and, and, and we've got the reach and you know we've got the engagement as well so yeah we, we have started to see that we, we're still news driven but you know you, you can certainly you know I mean I, I've probably spent two hours on news and six hours on everything else today and, yeah. and that's fairly uh, typical these days no it sounds like you've really from something that just started as a pub conversation it's incredible what you've built 
Um, so kudos to you. Uh, Mark, listen, thank you so much for coming on. If anyone wants to get in touch with you, uh, speak to you directly, learn more about Demolition News, what's the best way for them to do that? Easiest way is to go to demolitionnews.com. But, uh, you know, as I say, we are Demolition News on Instagram, on Twitter, on Facebook. Probably a bunch of other places as well that I'm not aware of that my son's <laughs> playing around with. Um, so, yeah, demolitionnews.com is the starting point, I would say. Brilliant. Mark, thank you so much for coming on Founders 365. I've thoroughly enjoyed this conversation. And thanks and for I having really, me. No, thank you. And I really look forward to getting to know Demolition News more because this is a new world for me as well. Uh, so I'll definitely be checking out. So thanks again. And thank you, everyone, for listening and watching. This has been Founders 365.